ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. After you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify him in your goodness to the goodness of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his salutations of honor and peace. Salawat Allah alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa his family and his companions and upon those who follow them in good. <coughs> We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to gather with our brothers here in the city of Philadelphia. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us gather in one of sincerity and that He keep us firm upon the Sunnah and that He accept this from us. We have a narration that we want to remind our brothers of. Collect uh, Ibn Mahdi, Rahmatullah alayhi, from the narrations of Abu Tarda. رضي الله تعالى عنه. إذا خرج علينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم entered upon us. ونحن نذكر الفقر. We were discussing poverty. You know how when sometimes times are hard, brothers constantly talking about how much more money we need to make. It's a regular conversation that we have. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered upon the Sahaba, and they were talking about, you know, the difficulties of being broke and not having money. And with the khawafu, we were talking about how scared we were and how, you know, concerned we were about finances and, you know, the detriment that comes along with not having any money. فقال الفقرة خافون. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked him. He said, "You are scared of poverty. You are scared of being broke. You worried about money." He said, "Way mo, walla di nafsi biyadi, walla di nafsi biyadi." He said, "I swear by the one who my soul is in his hand." Let us have been alaykum the dunya sabda. The dunya will be poured upon you. The dunya will be poured upon you in abundance. It will be poured upon you. wealth, finances, money. Right, the dunya will be poured upon you in abundance. Hatta la yuzira qalba ahdi kum illahi. To such an extent that the only thing that will cause a man's heart to deviate is the dunya. You're gonna have so much money, so much money, you don't even know what to do with it. I don't think we have to, you know, wait for that time. I don't think we have to sit back and wonder when is that, when is that time gonna come. From? That time has come a lot, many times. The Muslims have been rich and poor, and rich and poor, richer, little poorer. But nonetheless, we have been, as a whole, as a body, we have been. He said, Waymullah, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى مِثْلِ الْبَيْضَةِ لَيْلُهَا وَنَّهَارُهَا سَوَانِ He said, I swear by Allah, I leave you all upon absolute clarity. Absolute clarity. There's no ambiguity, there's no confusion, there's no contradiction. I leave you all upon absolute clarity. It's night is like it's day. It's night is like it's day. In another narration, no one deviates from this clarity, from this religion, from this absolute clarity, except that he or she is destroyed. Abu Dabda radiallahu ta'ala anhu He says, Sadaqa wallahi rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Tarakana wallahi ala mithl al-bayda The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I swear by Allah He left us upon absolute clarity He said, it's day and it's night Wallahi are the same The ulama Commented on this hadith They mentioned a lot of different things which we don't have time to discuss because that's not our main topic and our main point this evening. 
But one of the things they mentioned is that this statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi Some of them said his statement layuha wa nahawa sawak that it's day and it's not the same. It means that regardless of what time we live, Islam is going to be clear. Islam is clear. There's no ambiguity. There's no contradiction. The Sunnah is the same. Tawheed is the same. It doesn't change. It doesn't modify based on. And the principle that the campaigns of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were cultivated upon those principles still exist. It's never a time to modify the religion and add new principles. Regardless how bad the fitna is, regardless of how much innovation spreads, regardless of the shubhahat that the Muslims had, if we return back to those principles and stick to them tenaciously, we won't have a problem. This is the reality. And the, 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 you know I mean? the more we realize this, and the more we take this seriously, the less problems we'll have. Okay? So I want us to bear that in mind as we you know, proceed this evening, inshallah, to the Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentioned the ayah and we only want to focus on the portion of the ayah because again we have an objective this evening we were requested to speak about a particular topic and we don't want to deviate from our topic. Islam is a very broad religion and the information therein is very massive and expensive and if we you know allow ourselves to just continuously read it will be tremendously beneficial and it will be fun and it will be food for the soul but we may not obtain our specific objective this evening, so I'm not going to have time to mention every benefit from the ayah that we want to discuss this evening, but the goal, the shahid, the main focus, and the point we want to discuss, inshallah, we will try to do our best. And we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to feed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, He said, well, I talk about man and your team. Do not go near, don't approach the wealth of the orphan. Illa billati ya ahsan. You, you protect the, or, the orphan's money, you safeguard the orphan's money, you don't violate it. You safeguard the money of the orphan up until that orphan is mature enough to handle his or her own affairs. Come to your measurements, how you buy, how you sell, you sell grain, you sell dates, you sell whatever it is that you sell. When you sell it, you have to do it justly. You don't cheat people, you don't rob people. Allah said, we do not put the responsibility or burden on the soul more than it can bear. Many of the ulama said that these kind of ayat like this, the main thing that we extract from them and their other benefits is that a religious responsibility will not be placed on you except that you are able to maintain that, that commandment and that responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed upon you. And when you speak, speak truthfully. This is the point of this evening. When you open your mouth and you speak, speak with justice. Be truthful. Don't twist. Don't turn. Don't modify the context. When Amr yaqtadil wujub. Commandment from Allah necessitate that it's wajib. This is a commandment. There's no if, ands, or buts, so can we do this? Can we do that? We mentioned earlier in the khutbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the only statement that the believer makes anytime he or she is called يعني, by Allah and his messenger. In other words, when Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have legislated in an affair, the only thing the believer says is we hear and we obey. It's always about submission. That's it. It's about submission. Sometimes that's hard for the women, right? You're trying to bring the lead. <laughs> They're not the easiest. You got all this stuff, brothers, be this library, you bring books. But like, listen, Shima Bukhari said, she's just looking at you. You could be the best brother. She'd be like, well, now you're pious. You're like, well, what was I fast up yesterday? <laughs> now you want to use the religion. I always use the religion. You use the religion to, to, to fit your agenda. You changing it. Bashallah, may Allah bless the women of Allah. That's the biggest ni'mah we have. Wallahi, that's the biggest ni'mah in the makhluqat, yani hadam, from the things we have today in our life, yani, that's accessible to us on a day-to-day -day basis. Wallahi, our women, our wives, our daughters, our mothers, they tremendous. We teach them every once in a while to break the monotony. You know, alhamdulillah, I'm traveling, so you brothers gotta go on and deal with your wife tonight and she, you know, get at you for that steak and I'm be my wife, by the time I get there, she misses me, so by the time I get home, I ain't gonna work like that. Y'all gotta deal with that later. Why don't brothers say that? You don't wait to. Nah, nah, nah.
But honestly, um, the way we have to be, and the brothers as well, sometimes we have this um, ego where we feel like you know, we don't want to listen to our wives when they say something. Sisters, the easiest way to deal with a Salafi husband is to be educated. To be educated, because he's constantly saying, Salafi people, who I am, this one, that, you gotta listen to me. Get you some books, sit down, study, build up your arsenal, right, so you can defend yourself. And when he tries something slick, say, wait a minute, hold on. That's not what I read. This little man said this. Look, this guy is hadith. And then watch what he said. Um, Ash also said, I already sent this email to one of my sisters overseas that got the question to Sheikh Hosea already. This was his answer. They didn't give it to him. He gonna, like, like, if he has an ego, it's going to be like you pour salt on the slug. He going to contract and fall back. That's what you, that's how the Ahlul Sunnah some of their things. What Allah said, we have some problem, what do we do? Ruddu ila Allahi. Huh? We to refer back to Allah's messages. It's very simple. It's, they're arguing and the fighting. It doesn't really make any sense. The Sahaba, if they had an issue, it got resolved quickly. Sahaba, if it was something that took place among the Sahaba, they were able to rectify it. Right? They were able to quickly because everybody submitted to the day. Hmm? Everybody spoke to Jadid Mullah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the diet. Umar was worked up, he was emotional. He said, if somebody say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the diet because they already went to that in remember? They were lying, Shaytan lied and tried to make the people think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the diet in Fa Umar heard, he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. Umar said, listen, if anybody say he died again, I'm going to take my sword and I'm going to cut him, chop his head and my sword. Then Abu Bakr dakhala alayhi. Abu Bakr came, radiya Allah anhu. He said, Ejlis ya Allah, sit down. And then he told the people in Makana, Ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Anybody who worship Muhammad, Muhammad died. Anybody who worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he died, meaning you don't, apparently you don't have any deen anymore if you worship him. He died. That's all. But anybody wish Allah, فَإِنَّ Allah هُوَ الْحَيِّ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all living and he never dies. And then he recited the ayah of Al-Mata al-Qutin, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa dies or he's killed, are you going to turn back on your heels? Are you going to stop being Muslim? Is your morale going to drop? Are you going to stop making fajr and those and those and those and those and and qiyam al Was it about him or was it about Allah? The shahid is that when Omar heard that, he said, my legs couldn't hold me. He said, when Abu Bakr recited the ayah, it was like the first time I heard it, my legs couldn't hold me, and he dropped down to the floor. But a minute ago, he was worked up. But when he heard the dalil, done. No kalam. He just said, Abu Bakr, wait a minute, I'm going through something. I'm trying to grow. It was over. Salina wa abarna. That's our methodology. And the soft heart is easy. See, if we got fit now, you grab your brother by your hand and say, I can come on, we fighting for what, bro, come here. I love you, man, sit down. Yeah, but you didn't listen to the advice and shit. I can sit down, I love you, man, sit down for a minute, bro, sit down. Come on, relax. Now, what did not listen to? Well, you didn't take the advice of some. Okay, can you please explain this advice to me? Give me the ayat and hadith so I can please take the advice from my father. Now, the selfie. Right? The Rabbani, the one who understands these Messiah and took Turk time out to learn his religion from the basics and built on that, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kunu Rabbaniyin, Bima kuntum tu alimun al kitab, wa bima kuntum tadru sum. Be Rabbaniyin when it comes to teaching the book. And be Rabbaniyin when it comes to learning the book. Abbas, radiallahu anhumah. He, he said, Al Rabbani, Al Ladi Yurabbi Nas, Bishirar al Ibn Qabla Kibari. The Rabbani that Allah is telling you to become is the one that starts with the basic aspects of knowledge. Before he gets into this big Masail, Jahud Ta'dil, what have you, Qadim Allah? We're in Philly trying to figure out how we're going to make money, take care of these women, keep the kids from going crazy because they're getting nuttier and nuttier in this world. We fight and the people is gay, gay, gay. Everybody gay except us. <laughs> well, lie, if I see two non-Muslim men walking down the street, they are gay until proven straight. 
That's what's best for the that world we live in. <laughs> Brothers, if we still, look how crazy we are. We think because we got weekend schools with the Hafal teaching our kids the Quran. Because we got some high powered nitro glycerin Arabic programs. You know, some so teach you that that Jerome and Qatar and that my son is on page number four. Right? You should hear him. Come here, Ahi. Tell him what you learned today in class. Al Kalamu al Afdul Murakabu. You heard my son. Then tomorrow, Monday, we send him to pee at such and such for eight hours. I have people who are educators in my family. The stuff that they tell me is going on in the public school system is a tragedy. We still have it successfully as a group. Some of us got money, like real money, not those couple of dollars. I'm talking about real, real, real money, like a lot of money, right? We'll have a friend, he got one son struggling with his son. I don't know what to do with my son, you know, he's starting not listen. You got a whole pocket bank safe full of money. You can't even put your brother's son in Islamic school. You can't even help your brother start a business so he can make money and keep get his wife in position to homeschool her kids. And we can't stop fighting. And it's, if it was real beef, like if we were beefing because this brother right here was a Sedefi, now he's some Shi'i guy, or now he's some Jahani Santa Pahan is created, that's a different story. How I got the exact same books in my library. Same books, all of them. I don't have one deviant book in my library, neither do you. We go to Umrah, what life? One time, there were some brothers, he wasn't talking, he wasn't talking to me, I wasn't talking to them. I don't know about him until he leaves so and so. I don't got no words for him. We was doing that for years. We wound up in the same tent and then I'm shaking hands and hugging. Came back to America, I ain't talking to him, he ain't talking to <laughs> We go out to visit them the same, same as Shaykh, side by side. I was a little younger. I didn't have no beef, it wasn't me, it was him. Because of somebody who I was close to, a Senefi, who was close to somebody who people lied and said was with this Hizbi. I said, now you know what you're talking about? He said, I ain't never, I ain't see, I, don't even, I never met that man they said I'm a companion to in my life. You understand? I was in a brother's house one time. Wallahi, I was in his house. We were on the phone with some kebab ulama from Saudi Arabia, Salah Shahim and people like that. On the phone, Sheikh Salah Haloum Haydan, on the phone. We all talked to the Sheikh. Meanwhile, a brother's on the phone with me earlier that day telling me, you need to leave for so and so alone. He said, it's been ulama one and against him. What ulama? Where's the paper a recording anything? And that's not what we're gonna, we're not gonna turn this into that. But my point is that as Muslims, we have a responsibility because there's times of fitness. This is what we're dealing with on a regular basis. Backbiting, talking about our brothers. We don't need, we forgot it's a principle. It became a hobby now. It's a hobby to just backbite, talk about our brothers. And the hearts are hard. You can tell, well, like, sometimes you look at the brothers, you smile at him, he can't even smile at you. He don't even smile. You smile. You like, right? And some of the brothers not not, not trying to be funny. They not even tough like that. Like, you no. Know, some of the brothers. I'm not saying any brothers, anybody. Cause some of the brothers, not sure about they get it in if necessary. But some of the brothers, like I know some brothers. One brother, he's not a daddy, so nobody start trying to figure out what your daddy is talking about. He's not a daddy. He's just a young brother that I know. And you know, he has so much care. I bumped into him one day. And the message, my see his kid in years. Last time I saw him, he was a little boy, his message, his father's Ikhwani, and all his family's Ikhwani Muslim. Not Ikhwani because we don't know, a lot of us don't understand his Mustafa Hai. So anybody who's not Salafi, we call him Ikhwani because that's the only name we know. No, 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 no. This man is a real Ikhwani, like full blown, issues with the Hukuma, shout out, burnt out, Ikhwani, Mubleseen. <laughs> right? Nut. His family. So I seen him the whole time, you know, he was little, we got to post on the center for you. Of course, nobody listened. I bumped into him after years in the mystery. So he starts asking me about some center fees that I know. You know, he asked me one particular brother. He said, yeah, when the last time you seen so-and-so? Amen, mashallah, my center fee, daddy, mashallah. He said, when the last time you seen so-and-so? I said, I seen him the other day. He said, yeah, you know, I don't really, I don't really, I don't really like to take notes from him or something along those lines. So I'm looking at him, then he start talking like with that. 
you know, because sometimes the brothers, when they get, you know, mashallah, the Dawah Salafiya, it's like, I don't want to use the word intoxicating, but it's adrenalating. Is that a word? Can I use that? We don't use it today. It's adrenalating or adrenalizing. It may give you a rush when you learn the truth. These ayat, these hadith, afwalu salaf, you start to read stories between this tabi and how he met so and so and how Jab and Abdullah used to go and give the khawadis da'wah and hajj and he would yani, do away with the bid'ah. We would get you so excited. You read Rasulullah Sunnah, Shaka Sunnah, you come out your house and swear up and down. Everybody in the city is a jahmi and you gotta defend everybody against bid'ah. You ain't got nothing. I'm talking about myself first. And sit down five minutes and make sure you understand the message. We're not saying you're incapable of learning. We say you didn't do it yet. Don't get offended because somebody told you you haven't done, done something that you have the ability to do. Nobody's picking on you because, you know, your size, your height, your eye color, your skin complexion. You're te we're telling you you're not qualified to talk about this. Not, we're not saying you're not qualified to talk about anything, but this topic specifically. Not even the mas'ala overall, the science. You're not qualified to talk about the science or this particular situation, because you don't know anything about the science, nor do you know the individual, the players that involved. Fitna. Brothers will come to you and say, listen, you got to do this. If a man walk, listen, I'm going to scan in the room. I can, I'll go out of the limb here and take a guess that 90-something percent of the people in this room is either from the street, and I don't mean like our parents didn't raise us. Good, I'm saying that we found the street some kind of way, right? Or either directly or vicariously. We made it a bit good, but we got a cousin and brother. Yeah, he used to get it in back in the day, but look, all of us. Imagine back in the day somebody came to you and said, hey, wear these sneakers and put this shirt on because I said so. <laughs> what? <laughs> look like you can kill me today. Right? Where did we come from a culture where if somebody pull a gun on you and you buckle, you soft? I remember one time, one of the older dudes on the block, I was sleeping. He came in the room. This is how they used to play. They were crazy. Some people in Jersey, nutty. I was asleep. He started elbowing me in my spine. I woke up with pain. That's what he's like. We want to make you tough so when you give me beef, you know, you can yourself. Nuts. And I couldn't cry. I'm about 13 years old. I wanted to cry. If you cry, you soft. What kind of. What is this, Sparta? <laughs> but that's how some of us grew up, right? So we're trained to not just submit to another man because he said so. Then we come to Islam, we learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we learn Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, فَلْيَحْذِرِ الَّذِينِ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Let those people who oppose the commandment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam beware. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell you something and you don't do it, you need to be afraid, you need to be scared. Why? Because some fitna may be for you. Some calamity may be for you. Some of the ulama say you may be imprisoned or tortured. You may die. Any kind of child or child or you can think of may be for you. You learn that, now you have no problem submitting to a man, meaning Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because this is a different category. But the Sahaba didn't even submit to each other without Dalit. They didn't submit to each other about the Dalit, yani without Dalit. They had no problem. Wallah ibn Bukhari, rahimahullah, he mentioned a story, and we're going to make it concise because of the time. What time is that? Uh, I'm going to finish it. Okay. 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 What time ibn al Bukhari, rahimahullah, he narrated a story. He said that. In the Sahih, he mentioned that one time, excuse me, um, he said that, uh, you know, two, that Abu Bakr and Allah, they, all, they had a dispute. I'm trying to make it concise because of the time. Uh, and the narrator, I want to say it was Abu Lad Mas'ud, but don't quote me on that, Abu Lad Mas'ud. He said, Kadal Khayyirani and Yahluka. Two righteous souls almost got destroyed. That's what he said about Abu Bakr and Allah. He said, Abu Bakr and Allah, they almost got destroyed. Now, he wasn't disrespecting them. He just was stating the reality. Two righteous souls almost got destroyed. Now, I'm going to extract a fa'idah and just bring some to our attention, some food for thought. Could you imagine right now, today, if we said, shit, so-and-so, he really almost messed himself up with the, ooh, you hizbi ball. Then he said, two righteous, he wasn't making time on the sahaba. 
He said, listen, my, our brothers, righteous souls, they really almost messed themselves up. This wasn't refuting them or talking bad about them. This was something he was concerned about. Two righteous souls, meaning Abu Bakr and Umar almost got destroyed. Did I, did, did, was, did I get revealed about Ibn Mas'ud saying he was making a of the Sahaba and he's no longer a companion and all of that? He stated the reality. Two righteous souls almost got destroyed. He said, ارتفعت أصواتهما فوق صوت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم their voices they raised their voices over the voice of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when when some men came and then some people came I want to say from Bani Tamim they came to get uh you know they needed a ruler or leader like some the Muslim community had gotten so big they needed like a like a governor somebody to come and you know oversee their affairs because it's not as a religious structure right so they needed someone to oversee their affairs. Not a Khalifa, but uh, just the one to oversee the affairs of an official person. And you brothers can refer, I believe, you can look inside in Bukhari in the Tafsir for this verse. Um, in Surah al the first two, I think the first two verses of Surah al the Tafsir and the whole story is there with um, detail, inshallah. So he said that one of them, when the, when the man came to try to get a you know, leader for his area, one of the two, meaning Abu Bakr al Umar, uh, some of the narrations mentioned it was this one or that one, but nonetheless, we know that one of the two said, why don't you order or let so-and-so be the uh, Amir of that area? And then the other one said, well, how about instead we make so, you make so-and-so the Amir for that area? So the one who originally made the suggestion said to the other one, you talking about Abu he said, you just said that to argue with me. You just said that to argue with me. So the other said, I didn't want to argue with you. So their voices, they kept going back and forth. And they started to argue and they got so loud, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was trying to talk and they couldn't hear him. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the verse, Ya ayyuhalladheena aman, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawta sawt al-nabi, wa la tajhahu lahu bilqawl ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'd, an tahbatu a'malakum wa antum la tashuroon. Oh, you who believe, don't raise your voices over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The way you raise your voices above one another. Don't don't talk to him and yell and scream in his presence. Be loud like you are when you're around each other. He's in a different category. When that happened, the narrator said every time Allah went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to talk so low, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh, I can't hear you, you have to speak up. That's Islam, that's Salafiya. That's how a senator he is. He hears and he obeys. The truth is the truth. He submits to it. Doesn't make a difference. And nobody at that moment to this day, nobody ever made ta'ana of Abu Bakr or Umar or Ibn Mas'ud for saying that they almost got destroyed. Because they had a balance. They understood Ibn Mas'ud was not trying to be disrespectful to Abu Bakr or Umar by making that statement. He was concerned that this kind of behavior from any human being will cause their destruction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet Don't yell and be loud around him like you are with one another. Because it may be that your deeds will be ruined and destroyed and they won't have any value and you won't even understand. You won't even know. You won't realize. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, When you speak, speak justly, be fair, be accurate in speech, even if it's against a close relative. And fulfill your covenant for your agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained and commanded you with in order that you all may reflect and remember and ponder. Okay? That verse is Surah Al An'am, verse number 152. Al-Imam Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah, he mentioned in his commentary on this verse. He said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ فَعْدِنُوا لَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى When you speak, speak justly, speak fairly, even if it's against family. He said, this is similar to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قُوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ شُهَدَاءَ بِالْقِسْطَ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنَ O you who believe, be upright, be fair, 
right? Be diligent in your pursuit of justice, right? Shuhada alillah, witnesses for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be yani, the kind of people that stand up for justice, for accuracy, even if it's against for the truth, even if it's against yourselves or your parents or your closest relatives. Doesn't make a difference to us. And that's a loose translation. He said, What can that? And likewise, there's other verses like the verses of Al-Ma'idah. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and ordered us with justice in actions and in statements. Anytime you make an action, anytime you deal with somebody in a particular way, it has to be a way that is just. Anytime you make a statement about someone, it has to be a statement that is just. Anytime you make a statement about a person's statement, it has to be just. And anytime you make a statement about a person's actions, it has to be just. Every time you do anything, it has to be done with justice. Not with equality, because everybody is not exactly the same. But everybody deserves justice. So the Prophet, rahimahullah, he said there's a difference between justice and equality. Equality is you make everybody the same. Man and woman are the same. No, everybody's not the same. The women don't work and take care of us while we stay home. Why not? The real man. Okay, it's the other way around. Everybody's not. Yeah, I mean, men don't get to take off a few days from fasting because of uh, a natural occurrence that takes place. No, because we're not the same. Everybody's situations are different. Nonetheless, everybody deserves and has a right to justice. He said, and you have to apply this justice and this fairness to those who are close to you and those who are far to you. Wallahu ta'ala yakum bil adri li kulli wahid or li kulli ahad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commanded with justice for everyone. Or fi kulli waqtin or fi kulli hal. At every time and in every circumstance, justice always has to be there. Al Imam al Shawkani rahimahullah. He said, wa da qultum, the statement of Allah, wa da qultum fa'dilu. When you speak, speak justly. He said, wa da hakamtum. Bain al nasi, fa takalamtum. فَقُولُ الْحَقْ بَيْنَهُمْ Anytime you have to make a judgment between people, or anytime you have to speak and talk to people about something, speak the truth. Speak justly amongst them. Be fair amongst them. If you know this person over here, honestly, you know him. You know this person, person of the sunnah, you have to deal with him like you deal with people of the sunnah. You don't treat him the same way like you treat a Sufi, Shi'i. He's not the same. He's not the same. The Salaf didn't deal with people who may have made a mistake or maybe their statement wasn't all the way clear, so we need to talk to them about that. They didn't deal with them the same way they dealt with a person who was a clear Qadri, who didn't believe in the Qadr, and he was teaching people that there's no Qadr. He got dealt with one way, and the person of the Sunnah got dealt with another way. But there's this new thing going around where everybody gets dealt with the exact same way. Everybody's an op. Everybody, everybody, everybody. You're not with me, you're against me. What you what you talking about? What you have? What is it? Because I'm with the same niggas? What are you talking about? If you're not with me, you're what the fuck? Everybody. Everybody, you get treated the same way. That's a Sufi over there. I'm gonna treat you the same way. That I'm gonna treat you like I treat me treat you as a party. And Omar Suleiman. What? When we were younger, some of the brothers, like we were like around 20s and stuff, but if you call a brother Hizbi, you might, it might go real, real left in the inner city. Some of the brothers were here to witness that. Hizbi, it, for a Salafi? What's worse than that? Only thing is a mushroom, a gay, <laughs> rapist, or pedophile. A Hizbi? You be ready to go after that. What? You know what a hisbi is? These guys are on the internet trying to explain away Tawheed, explain away the Sunnah, explain away sticking to the left dodge of the Salaf, and you put, put me in that category because you feel like it, because you told me to do something. I asked for Dalil, now I'm an op. That's not Salafi. I'm not calling you a Sufi, but that's how the Sufis move on. That's what they do. It's all about my shaykh. And with people like my shaykh, that's our shaykh too. Don't let the brothers come and try to steal the status of the real man. 
That's our sheikh. That's our sheikh too. Don't you remember when we was all in his house learning the same book? Eating the same in the same classroom, in the same in the same damage, in the same missile, in the same Kuwait. Don't you remember we were all there together shaking hands? You remember that? Some of us were laying down in Izar's and wife beaters. <laughs> tank tops, huh? In Izar's and tank tops. Getting personal telling each other all our personal business from the 19, 20, 21 years old, eating off the same plate. Eating off the same plate was there when the brother got his first wife. And then sadly, his second wife and his third wife too, and they wasn't, I don't mean married the second two, I mean married, divorced, married, divorced, married, sadly. But we was there through the whole process. Now, you call me and tell me, listen, we ain't going to mention so-and-so no more. And I say, why, what happened? I just trust the brothers. What are you talking about? Could you please just do, look, we, today we have a chutzpah, right? When Yahya ibn Yama had an issue, what did he do? He went to Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, he told him what happened. What did Abdullah ibn Umar do? Did he just tell him this? Do this because I said so? What did he do? What did he bring? I'm asking the brothers to please help me. Dili! He brought Dili and he brought evidence. Stay away from them. I'm free from them. They're free from me. And this is why. Clear. Yahya and Humayn ibn Abdul Rahman, that was it. They wasn't messing with him anyway, but now they got something solid. So when they go back to Basra and everywhere else, and they represent the Aqidah and the Sunnah, the Aqidah of the Sahaba, they can support it with Dalil. So when they speak, they speak with Dalil. Imagine Yahya ibn Yahya. I was with Abdul Rahman and told me, you should leave him alone. And somebody said, what's the delay? And now you go, well, you got to go all the way back to Medina and ask the shape. That's the shape. <laughs> that, what kind of weird set of fear? You, wallahi, the brothers, all they have to do, just be quiet. I mean, nobody elected you the spokesperson for us. you making us look crazy. Sometimes brothers jump out there. Look, some of these hisbies. They know like ayat, some of them hafad, some of them memorize some hadith, they know Arabic, some of them, we're not praising them. We're just letting you know some deviants, they don't think every deviant walking around and he don't know nothing. No, 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 no. Some of them deviants you jump out there, I see brother jump out there. And then this deviant guy, real deviants, we ain't talking about a Salafi who you see prayer at Matthew so so now he's not Salafi no more. Not them, real deviants. Right, not the hook proclaimed Deviant, the one that the local people claim is a deviant. Some brother be high, man, high off uh, 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 pills with fentanyl in them. Half sleep to them, I don't go to mess so so they hiss me down there. <laughs> you smell like sour diesel. You got eight perks in your pocket. And you talk about saying, yeah, the well is on, you know. You're my brother, you got some other problem, we gotta get situated. Leave that reputation and that, leave that for now. Maybe <laughs> one day, not now. Not now. After you listening to the brothers. <laughs> but the Seleph, that's not how they were. The Seleph, you know, spoke about that? Those who were qualified. When Abu Musa and Ash'ari, went into the Meshi, he saw the people making this. But they ate group thicker. They were all sitting around. One was leading everybody in thicker. He said, Subhanallah. Right? Some of the funny messages they do have today. And Subhanallah. And everybody followed. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Then he finished, Alhamdulillah. And then everybody go, Alhamdulillah. The group is thicker, right? Bidah. And Musa al Ash'ari, the Allah of Anhu went in there, he saw them doing that. He didn't go, Wallahi, I need to get her unto him, get her, get her. He was qualified. He went to, what did he do? He went back to the house of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and he waited for him to come up at Fajr. Why? Listen, he had enough, he was up so early. He had enough time to get to the masjid, see the bid'ah, get to the house of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and wait for him to come up, right? Uh, for Fajr, that's how they were. All night, they were waiting, Fajr was the main event. Then praying, they can't wait for Fajr to come and answer us, we, Dread some of us. We don't even want to get up. We want to pray, but it's like, man, I'm so tired. I was up last night talking about the brothers who ain't seven feet. I'm sleeping now. We're on the phone two o'clock in the morning. 
right? Talking about Mashiach that we don't know, reading stuff that we don't even understand for two hours and sleep. He was up so early, he had enough time to get to the message, see the good guy, get to the message, I was away from him, and then walk into the message. And he let him know what was going on. And Mr. came and he dealt with it. My point is, he didn't even jump out there. For us, we jump off the diving board out of a plane into all of fitna. Anybody want to know about so and so? Ask me. I know. Because my friend told me they was at Sheikh So and So house, and he said this. What friend? I don't know his name. It's the brother that. I asked you for the name. You send me a YouTube clip that doesn't even clarify the message. And when I say, what is, I don't understand what that means. Oh, brother, you need to. You, brother, so until we are going to leave you off until I just asked for clarity. Now I got to go in his be time out Because I asked for clarity. See, I can, I can talk. And I can be a little silly because some of the brothers I love, I'm not, I don't have this, you know, I'm not with no beef. I'm letting the brothers know. I don't got no beef. I love all my brothers. And I don't see some brothers see these people to be that, that people to be this. I'm not in there. I ain't abandoned none of the brothers. I know we're none of that stuff. And I'm neutral. I got no hop is the hop and bop is bop. Don't make me a difference. You say something wrong, he says something wrong. I'm not with none of that. I don't even read the fit in the arguments. All that stuff, I ain't in none of WhatsApp groups. If I see any of that stuff, I'm out. Don't call me with that. Hey, what they say about, you know, brother so-and-so and Sheikh -so Rabi. First of all, his name is Sheikh Rabi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I am. Sheikh yeah. Rabi said, you know, Sheikh Rabi was saying the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sheikh Rabi over there in Kuwait. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, somebody told my mother. They said, listen, this is like, like, uh, like maybe seven years ago. She said, they said, sister, why do you go to smash this so so Seven of you mentioned it. What's wrong with so and so so Well, Sheikh al daddy said you shouldn't go there. Sheikh al daddy just said you shouldn't go there seven years ago. Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al Muhammad ibn Nuh al-Najati, Rahimahullah, seven years ago, said you shouldn't go to this masjid, this new masjid. This is sick. And again, I can talk comfortably because I don't have no beef. Brothers can't say, oh, well, like it's, you know, no, because the same brothers say that. I love them, and you know I love them, and you know I ain't got no beef. This is a reality. I'm not taking, I'm taking cheap shots, but I'm, I'm, it's at the punching bag. It's not at nobody specifically. Now, if you happen to be in this category, then oh, that's, yeah, that's you. But I'm not, they're not talking about anybody specific. I'm doing my best to keep any images, any people out of my mind. Because it's honestly, it's just a universal problem. It's not specific to one brother. It's a concept. We're going at the, at the mentality, not the brother. So please, don't misunderstand it. Please. He said, وَعْدِلُوا وَمْصِفُوا وَلَا تَجُورُوا وَلَوْ كَانَ الَّذِي يُتَوَجَّهُ الْحَقُّ عَلَيْهِ وَالْحُكْمُ ذَا قَرَابَةٍ لَكُمْ He said, be just in your speech, be fair in your speech, and do not impress anyone in your speech, even if the issue is, is, is dealing with somebody that's close to you. If one of your boys, we're talking about parents and family, aside from parents and family, if one of your boys makes a statement that's out there, you have to deal with it. Some of the brothers now, now I'm gonna deal with the other brothers because there's brothers now who, they're like this. They got so frustrated with the fitna that's been taking place over the years, that now they're like, I don't want to hear no reputations about nobody. But, but there are some reputations as a warning that are legitimate. How to, what's the difference between a credible reputation and one that's not credible? Somebody, what's the difference? With Dalit. We're talking about Dalit. We're not telling the brothers we don't want to hear reputations. No, we love reputations. That's what protects our religion. Do you know what happens when you don't have reputations and criticism? Christianity. You see, Paul, y'all know Paul from the Bible? His name used to be what? Saul. His name used to be Saul. Paul, when Isa ibn Maryam was alive, I didn't even to say that according to Yami, the, the scholars of Islamic history and world history. When Paul was alive, or Isa ibn Maryam was alive, I didn't even to say that, 
Saul, who later on became known as Paul, used to curse him and say, if I ever see him, I'm going to do such and such. He used to run down some of the, some of the narrations from that time, those historic narrations, Allah A'lam, how authentic they are, mentioned that he would kill some of the Hawaliyin, the disciples of Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu salam. Then, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed Isa ibn Maryam from the planet, alayhi salatu salam, Saul said, this is in their book, I fell off a horse. I got up from the horse. My name is Paul now. And I know all of y'all were with Isa ibn Maryam learning Tawheed and learning Deen, but Isa came to me directly and told me to tell y'all don't listen to nothing he told y'all before. And then he's coming to me now and will give me information, and I'm the new one that's going to under you know, the Mubella between the liaison between y'all and Isa. Wallahi, this is what happened. Then he got the Romans behind him, he convinced them. Like the Hizbis do, they go get a big and deviant, deviant, corrupt individual. They go get all the money and the people behind them. They get all this funding because they bend and twist and they do whatever it is that the powers that be, quote unquote, want them to do. So they gain love from this government and that government. And he got all this money from the Roman Empire. And they support him with military and everything. So now when he comes into Jerusalem with all of this crazy innovation and heresy and twist of the truth, he said, but companions, alayhi wasallatu salam, they weren't Abu Bakr and Umar, Uthman Ali, they weren't Bilal and Sam and Kasha and Ibn Mas'ud and Abdullah ibn Umar. They weren't them. They said this guy is crazy, he's a heretic, according to their history books, I'm just saying. And they fled and they left, and that's how the Trinitarian doctrine became established in Christianity. In our religion, if Paul would have came and said something, what happened with that Musaylim and Kedvab? They worked out for him, did it? Musaylim tried that. Bye bye, Mosaic. They got rid of him immediately. Right? And later on, anybody who came and tried to modify or twist the religion of the Prophet got exposed for who they were, got refuted, got exposed. So without judgment, without refutations and clarifications, we will lose our religion. So there's no, oh, we don't want to hear that. No, 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 no. That's another methodology. That's not the methodology of the center. So those brothers that are so frustrated, those sisters that are so frustrated with reputations that they don't want to hear any reputations, you're on the other extreme. And you might be worse. In my opinion, I think you're worse. That's my personal opinion. You, you don't want to hear nothing now. Everybody's okay. One brother said, man, it's so much fitna. It's making me rethink all the people that were refuted. So I got to go back to the last 20 years and start all over with the brothers I left off. Like, Hamza, useless. <laughs> you going to listen to those guys or everybody. You're going all the way back now. Everybody's okay. Yakin, oh, this one. Huh? This, uh, uh, are we still the place, the other group? Mother, all these guys. I'm listening to them because I, and you said, look, I don't really think the brother says, ah, yeah, I'm not with that fitna. This ain't fitna. I'm not deleting for this. I don't want to hear nothing. Leave me alone. That's the other extreme. The Salafi is balanced. All we're asking the brothers to do is if you have any issues or problems, bring your Dali. And if it's some Dali that the Salaf understood different ways, that the ulama and the Sunnah understood different ways, and nobody made part and they refuted and chastised the other for it. And I believe, based off of what I see, based off the circumstances, I believe that the Sheikh of ours who we loved he made a mistake here. You talking bad about the ulama. Imam Bukhari, do you know Imam Bukhari had other books besides the Sahih that have unauthentic narrations? Sheikh al Bani has a book called Da'if al Jami. It's this thick, loaded with weak hadith from hadith narrators. Those ulama who put them, those books of hadith, sometimes they put them in there, they knew they were weak, but they put them in there for different reasons, but sometimes they put them in there by mistake because they didn't know this person right here. His memory was weak, right? So they didn't know this person right here didn't actually meet so-and-so. The hadith is weak. This person didn't know that, so the scholar put it in the book. It's authentic. Scholars make mistakes. That's not fine. He ma they make mistakes. We're not calling on a deviant. We're saying he's a human being. He made a mistake. Why did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said that the woman which he makes a, a yani makes a, 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 he tries to reach the truth. And he gets it right, he gets two rewards, and if he makes a mistake, he gets one reward. 
because he was letting us know that even the greatest scholars may make a mistake. That's my shit. Some of the brothers like, that's my, my shit. Like, man, we completed three, four, five books with him. How's that your shit? You wasn't none of those dudes. It's your shit. How you telling me about somebody I know person? Some of the brothers are like this with some of the men Like this. I told you, brothers on the phone, me telling me, this Michelle, this shit, that shit. Don't talk to brother so they've abandoned it. I'm like, I just got off the phone with the brother and the shit on the three, but the shit told him, when you coming back, we need to sit down and have some, you know, more down, do some more down together, let the brothers know in America, give them my salam, if you know what I mean, you can't give me here. And he told me, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, the advice of the sheikh, the alleged advice of the sheikh, then I'm not dealing with you no more. <laughs> Till you do that, I can't deal with you no more. I'm like, but Ahi, I don't know. Just imagine, put yourself in my shoes. I know what you're saying is wrong. Imagine somebody coming to you and telling you, listen, your uncle is outside. And he said, my uncle? My uncle passed away. My uncle. I'm saying, let's say, say my mother's second oldest brother, for example. He died, right? Somebody said, hey, your Uncle Ricky is outside. I'm saying, Uncle Ricky died. Ahi, listen. I'm telling you, your Uncle Ricky is outside. And if you don't listen to what I said, we cutting you off. And you expect me, a man, to walk back home to my wife. Now I'm a man when I get in the house. But now I'm going to let you tell me something that I know is wrong. I'm not talking about something that I want to reject because I'm in love with shit so-and-so, or in love with brother so-and-so, or in love with messy so-and-so. I'm telling you that's inaccurate. I know the shit and so-and-so is like this. I know that the brother you saying is with Fulan, never met Fulan in his life, doesn't read his book, and told me himself he don't like him, and that's my companion. I be with him every day. You see him three times. And when you tell some of the brothers this, you are an op. Instantly. We don't want to talk to you. We're not coming to your message no more. This is insanity. That's not Salafi. And do not think that all the brothers are like that. Do not think all the du'at are like that and everybody in this message, everybody who gives down with those brothers, that's a lie. If you do that, you know better than them. Deal with everything in, on an individual basis. Don't lie, don't modify anything. He said, وَلَا تَحْمَلَنَّكُمْ قَرَابَةُ قَرِيبٍ وَلَا صَدَاقَةُ صَدِيقٍ حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ غَيْرِهِ أَنْ تَقُولُ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ فِي مَحْتَكَمَ إِلَيْكُمْ فِيهِ Don't let the closeness, the friendship, the love you have, the, 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 يعني, the fact that you, this is a relative of yours or whatever, do not allow those things by the Allah Fikum to cause you to deviate when it comes to being just in your speech. Excuse me, that wasn't even Shokani. That was an Imam al tabari Okay, that wasn't Shokani. You know, Shikani, Shikani, his is the juiciest. We got, that's the last one we got to mention. We're trying to finish this up in 10 minutes. Shokani, his was the, it, it's like, wallahi, if I didn't know the ship was there, I think he was somewhere high down in Philadelphia. Hiding out in Jersey, hiding out in New York, hiding out in the UK. If I didn't know, this right here is from, from Abdul Rahman Nasser Sidi Rahimullah. He said, The statement of Allah, when you speak, speak justly. He said, When you have to speak, Yani and talk to people and deal with issues amongst people, separate disputes and so on and so forth. And you have to get involved in situations where there's statements made and actions made. Fat did be just at that time. Be just. Brother, come to you and say, why are you standing away from Brother So-and-so? Just tell the truth, I Just tell the truth. If the truth is I'm staying away from him because I gave him some advice that I read on the internet that Sheikh also said we should abandon this so-and-so, then say that. Then when I tell so if you say, look, I'm not talking to his brother anymore, you say, why? You say, well, because I gave the brother some advice he didn't want to take. Okay, what was the advice? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't believe that what you did was just. That's it. I don't, I, I don't have to take what you said. But I, and I don't, and I may not reject, I may take it, I may reject it. The bottom line is 
If I ask you about an individual or situation or something that took place, just tell the truth. You don't, don't worry about whether or not I'm going to accept it or not, or just do your best and be diligent in uh, explaining and clarifying the truth. Be fair. The chef, he said, فِي قَوْلِكُمْ وَمُرَاعَاتِ الصِّدْقِ أو بمراعات الصدق في من تحبون ومن تكرهون والإنصاف وعدم كتمان ما يلزم ما يلزم بيانه. He said, you be truth, be truthful in your speech, in your يعني desire in 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 reaching accuracy and truth. And do this to people that you love and to people who you don't love. Be just and stay away from holding and concealing things. That's incumbent upon you to mention. That's incumbent. That's obligatory you to mention. If you know there's more details, but you're scared to mention these details because it may make your argument look weak, you can't hold those back. You can't just leave important parts of the story out. You have to mention it. It could cause a lot of fitna. If you don't mention details and let everybody know everything that happened, imagine if 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 uh. Ma'bad or Yahya went and talked about Ma'bad and Juhani and these people from Basra and he didn't mention all the details. He went to Abdullah bin Umar and didn't mention all the details. He may have Yahya been misled. You have to mention everything that took place. Ah, if this guy is a deviant, you, when you call the sheikh, what do you say about an individual that go to the masajid that are not known for Salafiyah but doesn't go to the masajid of Salafiyah? Listen to the question. What do you say about an individual who go to the masajid that are not known for the sunnah, not known for salafiyya, but constantly goes and affiliates himself or teaches that masajid that is not known for salafiyya? So what that sound like? A hezbi guy or a person who don't like the people of the sunnah and like the people of the When in reality, that brother been blackballed for no reason, and there's a bunch of people who have masajid, ignorant people with no imam, no dawah, a couple of brothers who are good people, ignorant linguistically, meaning they don't understand Islam properly, and they want a salafi to come teach. So he goes, y'all cut him off for no reason. You cut him off because when he was in the jamia, he didn't really know a lot about nothing. He came from a city, he didn't know anybody, so he went there, went to class, sat in the dust, with shit, I'm Muslim, I bad, that's all he knew about, and he graduated. He wasn't with the Salafis, with the Jami. I want to lie, he might shoot to one of them. Y'all never even invited him to go nowhere. He had a turban on. One brother was like, Yeah, I don't want to be wearing turbans. <laughs> I didn't even know if they had an answer to that. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Never approached. Brother said, Yeah, the brother used to talk to me, man. I don't never, they never invited me to nothing. Now in America, everybody wanted, never even told the brother, oh, Come on, come on. Sheikh Rabbi, Sheikh this one down, whoever, Sheikh, Sheikh, so they never had the rules, let's go. Never invited him one time. Down, but now we come back to him, oh, yeah, we know he wasn't with life. He, indeed, he was not with us. Y'all wasn't with him. That 22 year old kid, 21 year old kid in the gym, now you 28. He 18 years old, you 29. He's an 18 year old, been a Muslim two years, just left the street. He got some shoe hats for indeed his affair is not clear. I ain't want that. Come on, man. And again, I'm not saying all the brothers are like this. Yeah, I think that a lot of this stuff is is, is uh, propagated by you know people who have not really educated themselves on anything. But there's some brothers who have some education that's guilty of it too. We all have to fear Allah Subhanahu wa Taala as it relates to this. The Sheikh went on. He said. فإن الميل على من تكره بالكلام فيه أو في مقالته من الظلم المحرم that indeed to deviate in your speech because you don't like someone or to to try to 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 give a man some characteristics and talk about a person the way that they don't deserve say they did this or did that or try to contextualize their actions in ways that don't fit them is from haram oppression or to take their statements out of context is from haram oppression. He said, Bell, this is Abdul Rahman ibn Nasr al Sa'd, this is the mean sheikh, Rahimahullah. He said, Bell, if the Takalam al Alimu ala maqalati ahlil bidda, Falwajim alayhi and yotiya kulla di hak in hakahu, where you bayin a mafiha, minal hakti wal batin. He said, Rather, 
If a scholar talks about the people of innovation, it's a wedge and obligatory upon him that he gives everybody their right. You can't even oppress a deviant. What about a Salafi? You can't even oppress a deviant. What about a Salafi? He said it's incumbent upon you that you clarify the truth from the falsehood. When I tell you that, and this means that you have to take into consideration how close this deviant may be from to the truth or how far he may be. Everybody doesn't get dealt with the same way. The Salafi guy that just, he don't know, he may be hanging around some people, and I'm not talking about nothing that transpired this weekend. Please do not take this out of context. If I want to say something, I'm going to say it. Anything that I believe I should say, I'm going to say it. I'm not talking about nothing transpired this week. But there are some brothers, wallahi, they don't need, they make decisions. Some brothers, not all, some of the brothers, they know exactly what they're doing and they shouldn't be doing it. Senators, they know who they're around and they shouldn't be around. But there's some brothers, that they really don't know. They don't know. Brother asked him to come to my class. He go, he, okay, no problem. Nobody knew that the person he was filling in for, and again, when I didn't say this, it's impermissible. The baby said, come to a daughter for this weekend. He'll go to the, no problem. He don't know the match, no nothing. He get there, all these his do out there. there. They got him on the flyer. One time, a brother was on the flyer. He wound up going after I gave him advice. I'm not going to expose him, though. He didn't know. You know, he was out of the country for a while. Somebody invited him to a lecture. He came. He said, okay, I'll do it. When he got there, or before he got there, they put all these full-blown Hizbi deviants who speak about the Book of Allah and the Sunnah in the way that's inaccurate. All of them were on the fly with him. I, I called him, I hit him, I te- emailed him, I said, I think you best stay look. I see your name on this fly, I don't think you want to be around these people, look. He said, oh man, I didn't even know those people, I thought it was going to be me, whatever. He wound up doing it. You know, I don't know the brothers, me, I ain't getting involved, but I know them Hizbis be throwing money around somewhere. And some of the brothers, I'm not accusing nobody of anything, but I'm just saying beware, sometimes they throw that money around, See, Senate e man, they used to making like 130000 That's not a lot of money, but it's more than the Senate massage. Some of the Senate massage, I don't know the brother in Philadelphia. You know, I hope your brothers, mashallah, didn't make sure Abdul Hafid and Tofi and brothers like that got big homes and they got the family, got everything they need, and everybody in the family has everything they need because it's very difficult to give the community what it needs and go out and hustle and put businesses together and do things for it. So, I'm the brothers, of course, nobody said anything to me. But I was an imam for 10 years, and I know what it's like to be in that position where you're trying to juggle family and taking care. You know, the administration, they don't give you what they think they need. This administrative member got two kids, right, and a wife who is a brain surgeon or something like that. And she's like, no, I just take the money and do what you want to do. I mean, I hope that's not really the case because it's not decided to talk about somebody specific, but this is what life is hypothetical. And you trying to base what? That brother should get off how you live. This brother got nine kids, right? And you're trying to say, well, you can survive for $50,000 a year, maybe in Missouri. United States, you can't make it for That's another topic. My point is that you can't even oppress the people of innovation. Lastly, Ikhwan, and we've done, it's 9.30. Lastly, in Mashokani, the Himmullah, his commentary on this verse, he said, well, the fat dinu. When you speak, speak justly. Be fair. Hey, if they put on be calling fi khairin or shahadatin or jar'in or ta'deel. If you're speaking about inheritance, who's supposed to get what, and so on and so forth, if it's some type of testimony, if it's a reputation, a jar' or a ta'deel, he said, fat dinu fihi wa taharru sawab. Be just in your speech and try to reach that which is correct. Do your best to be accurate. And do not show favoritism and partisanship, I think that's the word, just because the person is close to you. Under some other circumstances, you would be, we wouldn't mess with you, but because you're a man, you get a pass. You get a pass. I've seen people do that with my own eyes. You get a pass. One time the brothers, it was a medalist, big fitna. Two brothers came together. This daddy, that daddy, they're not getting along. They're not seeing eye to eye. He got brothers who love him, he got brothers who love him. One group said, 
It, oh, you y'all gotta leave them. You uh, you need to abandon those brothers. Blah, 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 blah. Another group said no, y'all need to, and they going back and forth. One of the got involved. He said, listen, these two brothers, obviously, both of you guys have claims. And it was Ulama that had, had given advice about this brother, said, listen, y'all need to leave him off for now. And it was other Ulama that gave advice about that brother, said, y'all need to leave him off for now. Don't, they shouldn't be teaching, leave them off. They didn't say abandon them, period. They said, leave them off until we can get clarity and tell y'all how to handle this and move forward in your cities. One group, everybody left, one group went, they continued to refute the other brother, but worked with the other brother. The other group did the same thing. But here, what we find a lesson, Prophet Allah said, Fa'adilu, you gotta be just. The Shaykh gave advice, we're gonna follow advice, he brought Dalil. All right, Ikhwan, y'all just gotta go in the timeout, in the, your affair is gonna want that box. So we understand what we're going to do and how to move forward, you got to sit. Now, to some people, this sounds crazy, but the reason why this is also relevant is because when a person starts to deviate, now they're going to take these verses and these the hadith and take them out of context. And it will mess up your religion. The Khawarij think it's okay, the Thirahadiyun think it's okay to go kill and blow innocent people up because somebody took verses in the Quran out of context. Because they didn't understand, those people who were teaching them that should have been exposed and warned against prior to. So you, we cannot just assume that everybody we love is going to teach us the truth. It doesn't work like that. So if one of the scholars say, listen, Fulan, what did he say? And the brothers articulate what's going on with the brother. Let him hear recording. And the sheriff says, okay, well, it doesn't always sound, everything is not clear, but because the issue is so dangerous and so heavy, if I'm, my advice is that you don't be around him for now. And we gotta talk to the brother. Then you let the brothers know that's what the sheikh said. He said, look, right now we're gonna leave him off until he gets clarity. And the scholars are going to advise him and so on and so forth. Don't come back and say he's a hizbi, the sheikh called him a muqtadi, and anybody who hangs around him is a deviant too. That's not what he said. My point is that these things are so technical and they're so weird and it doesn't even, we don't even want to have to spend too much time talking about these things, but we need for everybody to understand that these reputations and these clarifications and these boycotts, when they apply appropriately, they are necessary sometimes. All right? So the Sheikh said, even with a subject or ta'deel, you be fair, you be just. He said, fa'adilu ala adu, when you have to be just even when you're dealing with your enemy. You have to be just even with your enemy. But he said, be just with everybody, for indeed that is the justice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the human being with the Juan. That's all we wanted to present. Allah.
what done at one. That's all I wanted to present. I just want to leave with the hadith to show you some of the dangers. It can, not the dangers, but yeah, if things are not clarified, how your opinion can be formed. You can formulate an opinion based off an individual that's an accurate. If you don't get the details and understand things and contextualize everything properly, everything has to be contextualized properly. Again, we're not saying that reputations are anything other than extremely important. Our religion is preserved by reputations and our praises and criticisms and clarifications. That's how our religion remains pure, but it has to be done correctly. It's not some hobby or everybody just must know this is, yeah, there's a specific manner that it has to be done. And one of the most important things is that when we speak, and this is not, we're not just talking, we're not saying that everyone should be trying to learn how to refute and learn how to clarify. No, no, no. What we're saying is that everybody has to be just. If you're going to open your mouth, that's all I said. Well, in that culture, if you're, you have to speak so justly. If you're going to be quiet, then be quiet. Enough. It's not the fact refutation enough. You have to understand the context that it was put in. That's what makes the Sahaba of the Allah so superior. It's one of the things that make them superior to us is that they were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they could contextualize everything he said. They were there to see his face when he made a statement or hear his tone or see his body language. So they knew how to contextualize everything properly. We have a narration here collected by Al Imam Abu Dawood Rahmatullah in a sunnah where he said, this narration um, is from the narrations of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala an. He said, Ja'at imra'atun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the woman came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa nahnu indahu. Afwan. Ja'at imra'atun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَنَحْنُ عِنْدَهُ We were with him. فَقَالَتْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ She said, O Rasulullah, إِنَّ الزَّوْجِ Safwan ibn Mu'attal Indeed, my husband, Safwan, his name was Safwan ibn Mu'attal She said, يَضْرِبُنِي إِذَا صَلَّيْتُ He beats me when I make salah. He beats me when I pray. وَيُفَطِّرُنِي إِذَا صُمْتُ and he makes me break my fast anytime I break my fast. And he doesn't pray Fajr until the sun rises. Would y'all marry a, a, a sister to a brother with that character? It was even his last marriage. And she said, well, the, the sister told him, the brother been, you know, what kills and guardians of the sisters. If the sister said, well, look, brother, I mean, I've been traumatized. I need you to be careful because I've been through a lot. I've been married for X amount of years. The last husband, he used to beat me when I make salah, make me break my fast, and he don't pray fetching until after fetching. Now, if I just said that and said, okay, let's pray, we done. So fine, it's like, man, what kind of brother was that? Listen. He said, when he made that statement, when she came to make the statement, Safwan, later on the Prophet I sent him after that, Safwan was with him. He saw Safwan, Safwan was there. I'm not, I'm not sure if he was there, right there in the vicinity, or a little bit after that, later on that day, or minutes, or how long it was. Nonetheless, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Sa'id was also present. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made contact with Safwan. Okay? So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he just take that? This is Allah's Messenger. The one who Allah said, He does not speak from his own desires. Right? Yani the one who said, when Amr or Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, I used to write everything I heard from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Quraysh told me not to do that. He said, so, you know, they tell me, he said, I saw you enter Taktub Kullama Samaita bin al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You hear everything you hear from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Nabi Yubasha, he's a human being. He may say something out of anger. You write everything he said, he's a man, he's a human being still. This is what Quraysh told me. He said, so I stopped writing, you know, I thought about it, I stopped writing. And then when I seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I told him what happened, and Quraysh told me this, and I stopped writing. The Prophet said, This is the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. The Prophet said, Uktub. 
وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ مَا خَرَجَ مِنِّي إِلَّا الْحَقِّ He said, continue to write, I swear by the one of my soul is in his hand, nothing comes out of me, nothing comes out of me except the truth. He didn't hear Allah's statement, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَلَى الْهَوَىٰ إِنْهُ إِلَّا وَحْيُ الْيُحَقِّ He does not speak from his own desires, rather it's revelation that he's inspired. So, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to speak, it was true, he was confident. But what did he do? He went to Safwan, and he asked Safwan about what his wife said. Safwan then went on to say, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Amma qawluha yadribuni idha sallaytu as far as the statement that I beat her every time she prays. Fa inna ha ta'ra'u bi suratain wa qad nahaytuha. He said, she beats her. Let's be, let's be clear. We're not talking about I turn up, beating her up, breaking her. We're not talking about that. We're talking about like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, just take a miswak or a handkerchief or something like that and tap your wife on her leg. Not a whip. You don't hold it back and pow, not like that. Just like, you know, like if you take your finger, just tap real softly like this. Why would that affect the woman? Because the husband is supposed to be so gentle, so gentle and so soft and so easy. That if he tap his wife and say, look, girl, come on. She's supposed to be like, oh, I, really, I hurt you, I'm, I'm upsetting you. Our women, you can't do that. You tap her, they ain't gonna do that. She ain't gonna pay you attention. You be looking around, you be tapping her. You gotta like shake her leg. She's still like, get off me, boy. <laughs> right? But everybody's supposed to be, your relationship with your wife's supposed to be such a tender one that if you took a miswack out your pocket and just not poked, not stabbed, just tap her. Took your finger and tap her and said, come on. A small little tap, very like no pain, barely don't even feel it. She just knows from your body language that you're frustrated. That's supposed to make her feel some kind of way. That's a beating in Islam. That's how merciful we're supposed to be. So he said, he does that to me. He beats me anytime I pray. So the man Safwan, radiallahu anhu wa anha, he said, as far as that statement, that I beat her when she prays, he said, she always read me sort of tame with the two long sorters. What sort of? What sort of do you think she was talking about? Baqarah. Baqarah. Talking about? Baqarah and? and yeah. 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 Now imagine you in the house. You got to go to work. Hungry, I got to get up out of here. And your wife go, you come in from the mess. She's like, I didn't pray mother to you. I didn't pray mother to you. I'm about to go pray. She said, all right, because I got to run back out. And you hear your wife in the other room. Alif Lamim. You're done. You're done. You're done. So that was a problem for him. I told her to stop, and she keeps doing it. So it got to the point where I just took my miss wife and I tapped her leg. That's why she's upset. That was his point. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Lo kana surat al wahida la kafat al nas." If Allah only revealed one surah, it would have been sufficient. In other words, sis, you don't gotta recite that long. You can when it's convenient, but when it's a problem, you don't have to. Your husband said he needs you. Go ahead and show him salah. Ten to your husband. One sort of would have been sufficient. Some of the ulama say this is talking about al-Fatiha. Some say it's talking about al-Fatiha and another surah. He said, وَأَمَّا قَوْلُهَا يُفَطِّرُونِ As far as the statement that I make her break her fast, he said, فَإِنَّهَا تَنْطَلِقُ فَتَصُمُ وَأَنَا رَجِلٌ شَابٌ فَلَا أَسْبِرُ He said, she always fasted and I'm young. I, just, I need that. You can't just fast and fast and fast. What am I do? It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I just worked out, took a shower. Hey, I'm she like, and the sock in me. You gotta wait till the mother of maybe. But then when mother of them come, I'm gonna say, Baka the Ali and Ron, so you get. <laughs> The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, like the man he said to the Prophet, I can't be patient. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنَ At that time, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said on that day, at that time, at that moment, لَا تَصُومُ إِمْرَأَةٌ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِي زَوْجِهَا The woman is not permitted to fast unless she has her husband's permission. Now Safwan, he's like, now we like Safwan, mashallah, that's our brother. Now, a minute ago I seen the brothers, he was like, you should have seen him looking at Right? MashaAllah, we're in the inner city. If you come to the mission and said, yeah, since it comes black eye, that brother better run. <laughs> he better run. Right? But Safwan came, and of course, he didn't beat his wife like that. We mentioned it was something. General Nuhsin al-Dhan, the Shahi Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
We always think good about the companions of the prophet. I said, look, we should never think that he took his fist and hit his wife. Even without me saying that, we should have known that it wasn't nothing physical to hurt that sister. It wasn't that not the situation. <laughs> Lastly, he said, well, الشمس, as far as a statement that I don't pray until the sun rises. He said, as far as the statement that I don't pray until the sun rises at Fajr time, he said, my people are known to oversleep, and we don't, we typically don't pray until the sun comes up. The other, there's another narration, another very this narration, uh, this narration with a narrative mention that that was because that man and his family, where the people in villages tribe, they used to pump the water all night for the Muslims. They would get the water ready for wudu, for hustle, to drink, any water you need in your house, they pump it all night. And they would lay down and take a nap right before Fajr, because they done, you beat, imagine pumping water. You ever carried a bucket of water? A bucket of water, we're not talking about, you know, you getting crazy with the 105s on the incline. I'm talking about a bucket of moving water from one place to the next all night from a well. He did, he said, we lay down, we tired, and we know it's a, it's, it's a bad habit. We're not, we don't do it on purpose. The ulama said a person go to sleep with the niyyah of not waking up for Fajr. He sets his alarm clock for an hour after Fajr because he got to go to work and need the extra hour and say, I'm going to sleep, then wake up and pray Fajr late. Many of the ulama said that person is a kafir. He went to sleep on kufr and woke up on kufr. He left Islam. The Prophet said, what is it about the salah? Man tarakaha faqad kafir. Anybody who bad in it has disbelief. Some of the ulama have been sunnah from today. Mention that. But this man, he used to pump well water all night. Him and his tribe, they would take a nap, and then they would, uh, yeah, I mean, they would, um, they would oversleep the fajr, and it was a bad happen. I say a bad happen, but it was something typical that they would do, and they wouldn't pray until the sun came up. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him, "For this day, when you wake up after you pray, when you wake up, you pray, because it wasn't intentional. The man tried, tried, but they were too tired. It was just a habit." It was just something that yeah, they developed into their circumstances. So my point is that you see how the whole thing changed with Safwan when we learned some more about it. You know how many examples? I was sitting trying to figure out which example I'm going to use. I was trying to figure out which example of it. So many examples. And we don't have time. Right? We don't have time. My point is that why everything has to be clarified. Everything has to be contextualized properly. We're not asking when your brothers, if any of your brothers have a problem, if any brother say, oh yeah, I was down there at that conference with them brothers, blah, blah, ain't nobody back by nobody. We love all the early night than any of the other brothers from Andes on the love. When we with the truth, as long as, and the truth, yeah, with, with the reason we say with the truth, because we are with the delete. And we're with the proper contextualization of the delete. Right? That's all we want to do. So if a brother says they have a problem with you or with me or with him or with her, and yeah, if you haven't brought any proof, any evidence to clarify anything, honestly, I think that brother has to take responsibility or that sister has to take responsibility. Because the only thing we're telling the people is bring your evidence if it's true. What you're saying is true. If I'm wrong, and this brother who I'm close to is wrong, and this person is wrong, just bring the evidence and show me where he made his mistakes at. And then we'll take it from there. But I'm a man, and you're not just gonna come to me and tell me to do something just because you said so. Please, please, man, who are you, honestly? You know, don't throw everything that we grew up with in the garbage. We got some stuff that can be utilized. That stuff that we learned growing up, that nobody, you don't let anybody just come take control of you and make you do, keep that. Everybody has to have proof and evidence. The only one that you just talk and you listen is Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't ask him for no delay. You don't tell him to be just. You don't tell him he's mistaken. When he was alive, that's not how he was spoken to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But everybody else, even Abu Bakr and Umar had been to me. طيب هذا ما عندي صلوات الله وسلامه على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك سؤالي فاطمه رسول الله الله يرحمها في الزمان